Let's take apart the lower part of this 424 Mark II. Have some sort of container ready for screws. Phillips type screwdrivers of a decent quality. Big one and a little one. Also useful to have a permanent marker so that you can write notes to yourself on the boards about how this is going to be reassembled. First thing I'd take out is transport. And it looks like I've already taken the screws out of this one. I believe there was one here. You can see I've already written an E here to remind myself that an earth wire is uh, going to go back here. I'm going to unplug the magnetic heads. There's also a cable connecting at the back of the transport here, which is how all the shuttle control signals and so on get into it. In fact, that's probably easier. Pull that out from there. The remaining wires are the control of the motor speed. Most models, the um, pitch control board is easier to get at than that. We're going to have to remove this board here first before we can get at that easily. 464, 424 Mark III, this would all be one board. But here we've got one, two, three, four board. That bit of metal is going to have to come out too. So I'm going to suggest that we number these with a Sharpie in the order that we're going to remove them. This is going to have to come out first, then this one. That looks like it needs to be removed before we can get that. And call that number four. Pitch control is going to be five and this metal thing is going to be number six. I can now access the cable for the motor and now the transport can be removed. I happen to know that the motor in this one is dead so I will for future reference say 424 mark 2 and then put dead on that so I don't confuse myself by reinstalling it in another machine at some point. The screw I've just removed from that board there is of quite an unusual shape and it's got this extra smooth bit at the top, different size of ferrule than a lot of these. I mean, most of the screws that you'll remove in a situation like this are this type, a wider ferrule, just a standard screwdriver that screws into plastic, so a wood type screw. I'll actually screw that into the plastic case so I don't get it too mixed up with the other screws. And if I find any more like that then I will do the same thing with them. Three screws that were holding that down were of a normal type. I'll remove this cable now just to gain better access to these screws. Looks like these are the small, smaller type of screw. And they are the same. Sorry, I'm in manual focus, so I don't know how well you can see that. But the same as that one. So once that's out of the way, I will just put the screws into those mounting posts now so I don't lose them. That should be number four. Once I get that out, I can wipe that four off with isopropyl pads of the same kind that you've seen me use to clean magnetic heads in other videos and put a five down instead. The two screws that that was attached by were of a standard size. That four off. Down a five, so I know what I'm doing. Unplug this cable, which seems to be how the display is getting its power. You'll usually find that these cables are just soldered directly into the board at one end, and then, then there's a removable plug at the other end. Right, earth here to remind myself that there is this cable that's going to run. I suspect it ends up here. Um, it's maybe just going around a mounting post or something under here. Notice that that was slid into this gap of this metal plate here. And this would be the sixth thing that I took out of there. If I was pretty sure that I didn't need to fix any of these, like replace any switches or reflow any solder, etc., then I'd be tempted to just leave this stuff attached to here because there's so many cable ties 
But if I needed to solder the underside of one of these boards, then that's probably going to be a pain in the neck. So for that reason, I will cut all of these. The other advantage for demonstration purposes is that I can demonstrate what wire goes from which board to which board and make a kind of educated guess about what cable is responsible for which function. So there's no point in cutting that one. But you see, any time you get a T-junction like that, these cables are definitely going to be going different places. So I want to be able to separate those. All the wires from this board are jumbled up with the wires from this board. So I will cut that cable tie. So at that point we can see the bottom board here, which will have all your record and playback amplifiers and DBX or the four tracks. That longish one here with 13 pins on it. That's going to your shuttle controls. And this daughter board has got your rehearsal buttons on it, memory buttons up here. Next, let's disentangle this pitch board. Its wires are connected to these track arm switches. I'm getting the tip of the scissors in underneath the cable tie. So only the tie is being cut and not the cables. We can now see that this three pin socket, just up from this big chip, is your pitch board, pitch control. So that's the adjustment, fine tuning and high and low speed and the user adjustment. Basically that has got that on the front of the case and that's what you're using if you want to intentionally make it a bit faster or slower. So that leaves these two pretty much disentangled. So there's a large red and white plug immediately above this large black integrated circuit. I assume this has got you know the little computer program in it that controls how this digital display is used on it and we've got one plug that disconnects here on the track arm that's going off to four different points on the bottom board I'm looking for relays maybe one of these black integrated circuits is a relay or maybe there's just some kind of logic built into some of these chips here that's basically controlling whether the signal is hitting the tape in record mode etc then there's these two cables again a red one and a white one because they're situated close to this large integrated circuit which connected to the display then i think that these cables are probably to do with sending visual feedback about the position of these the state of these switches to the screen as opposed to actually controlling the circuit just getting that part apart was a bit of a palava more so than in the 464 and 424 mark 3 which are closest in terms of their feature set oh, if there's any other wires that go from trans to bottom i think it comes at this end yeah I think that cable there is going to a daughter board for these sockets. So there's nothing to unplug there. Yeah, we can start to remove this board. I mean, as you can probably tell, I'm not as assured about what I'm doing with this unit as I was when I was demonstrating the same thing on the 464, particularly the 244. Um, those are models I've worked on a lot more. Um, I have worked on this a few times, but just not nearly so often. All these screws are turning out to be that standard, you know, wood plastic type. See there, I just removed this cable tie. What I'll do is write C slash T. I mean, it doesn't matter what you write, as long as you write some sort of hobo code to yourself. So that when you're reassembling the unit, you remember that a cable tie should go there. Because if you forget, then probably the wires will get in the way when you try and put it back together again. Another cable tie there, so I'll write on that in a minute. Just having a look to see if there's any screws I missed. No, okay, that's coming up. That socket there is going to this tape out PCB. We have two connections here to uh, voltage regulators. Voltage regulators will have serial numbers on them that you could Google. What I suggest is much easier 
is do not remove these from this plate. In a certain sense, it would make sense to just unscrew that and leave them plugged in. And then you don't have to worry about getting the colours mixed up. I don't know how visible it is on the camera, but you can see that there's remnants of, sort of heat paste here being used to ensure that there's a good sort of thermal connection between this heat sink plate and the voltage regulators. So you don't really want to disturb that for that reason. The much easier thing to do is to actually write yellow, red, black and white on the board and then you can just disconnect those safe in the knowledge that you'll be able to connect them correctly if you reassemble it. At this point I'm going to on this little daughter board right before bottom what I can envision myself doing is screwing down however many screws it was, like eight screws of that bottom board and then realising that I haven't put this back in. So I'm writing this note and in fact, I'll write on this board as well so I don't forget. Tape out first, exclamation mark. Three standard size screws attaching that little tape out board. Remember this is the earth cable that was connected to the metal plate underneath the LED display. As I suspected, it is just wrapped around the mounting post. So when you've got several earth wires, then you maybe want to make some sort of note and write on this board longest earth to, to LCD. I'm providing I can read my own handwriting and I shouldn't get too confused there. E here beside the screw so I remember that there is an earth connection to this from the trans board to the heat sink for the voltage regulators. I seem to remember having done this once before that the four screws that are actually at the base of the transformer are the ones that are seated into this metal plate underneath. In fact I probably need to unscrew this first. Okay, that's a standard screw. I suspect that one, two, three, there's another one here. Four screws are also of a standard size. Oh, also, we're gonna have to, with the one screw, there's one screw attaching this plate. It sits on a black plastic pin on the other side and that's where the means wire comes into the unit. Okay, so I think if I take out these four screws, yeah, see how these are very long, quite thick ones with very thin ferrule. And that's going into the metal plate underneath. And once I take these out, we'll be done. Again, useful to have a magnetized screwdriver. Yeah, so that all comes away as one unit. So I mean, the only disassembly that you could do beyond that, which I don't see as necessary, is there's two screws holding this shield. And this is, I guess, stopping interference from getting into the bottom board. I'm just seeing if there's any other screws, but it looks like it's that pin and that screw there are the only things keeping this heat sink attached to the bottom. But I don't see any real necessity under most circumstances to remove that. So I'll probably also do a video rebuilding this. If you've got a Porter Studio, it's a different model to this and I haven't put a video up yet. There's a good chance at some point in the future I will do a repair video on your model. So please subscribe if you would like to see that.